My name is Ali Magnawa. And I'm Camille Erskine. And our topic is discipline versus punishment. The theory that relates to our topic is B.F. Skinner and his behaviorism theory, which focuses on behaviors that are influenced by outside stimuli with an emphasis on rewards and punishments. For the sake of this presentation, we're mainly focusing on the punishment aspect. A limitation of this theory is that it focuses mainly on the child's visible behaviors instead of their thought processes and why they're doing what they're doing, which is where discipline comes in. So before we get any further, we want to define both discipline and punishment. So discipline is trying to teach someone about a behavior um, with rules in order to help them with their future behaviors. Um, this invokes the thinking side of their brain and allowing them to learn these new behaviors. Some effective strategies include modeling good behavior, using positive discipline, being consistent, as well as changing that up depending on their age. Now, for discipline, this is more inflicting suffering or putting them down based on their past behaviors and hope that they'll change for their future behaviors. So this, instead of looking at their thinking side of their brain, you're going more emotional and you're placing fear on a consequence. Um, this can lead to some downsides such as mental disorders, um, potentially being a future bully, um, worsening academic performance, as well as some other things listed up here. Now we're gonna wanna look at the differences between using discipline and punishment. So one difference is instead of educating students, which is what discipline does, um, punishment is getting angry at students and making them feel bad about themselves in order for them to change, which doesn't really help. Um, another one is with discipline, you really wanna give them a clear logistical reason. So exactly what they're doing wrong and here's the steps to improve. Whereas a punishment is you're gonna look at these things that they're doing wrong and you're gonna give them a completely unrelated consequence. Again, that's not really gonna help. Um, so there's three things to do in order to look more at our discipline side rather than our punishment. It's to be enforceful. So that pretty much just means being consistent with um, your consequences. Number two is fit the behavior. So if they're doing something wrong in this field, you're gonna want to give them a punish or a discipline in that field. Um, Ali will be going more into those examples in a little bit. And the third one is administrating professional empathy. So professional would be more with your teachers where just straight empathy will be more with your um, parents or supporters. Um, but with this, that empathy allows you to build a trust in order to keep those positive disciplines um, consistent and continuing. So teaching discipline leads to ordered learning. As mentioned before, it's really big to be consistent and have your consequences be logical with the student's behavior. You don't want to just assign any kind of punishment because then they're not really understanding what they did. You want to be able to provide appropriate ways for them to handle the situation in the future. Uh, one example is if a student were to knock over a chair you can ask them to pick up the chair and you can also have them arrange all the chairs at lunchtime. And an illogical consequence would just taking away recess from them. Recess doesn't make any sense with knocking over a chair, they're completely unrelated, so that wouldn't make sense. A second example is if a student walks in noisily, you can ask them to walk in again versus giving them detention, which again is completely illogical. A third example is if a student were to shout out the teacher's name, you can ask them to say it again in the normal voice versus just ignoring the student. And how this can be shown at home is through home-based reinforcement. This is where the teacher informs the parents of how the student is doing in the classroom and then the parents act accordingly to try to foster the correct behavior so that this can be displayed in the classroom. This is really great because it creates strong communication between the parents and the teachers. We never want there to be that disconnect where the parents do one thing at home and the teachers do another because then it creates confusion with the child and what's expected of them in both of these settings. And this has been shown to be really effective in changing classroom behavior as well as students' academic success. And that just shows that parents really do have a strong influence on the behavior of their children in the classroom just by the things they do at home. So it's really important that they're super conscious of whether they're disciplining or punishing their child at home, not just for the teachers. And then here are our references. And with that, we really want to encourage you as future teachers, um, a teacher yourself, and as well as parents or future parents, 
to really take this and choose to use discipline rather than punishment. Thank you.